Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and this is C++ from Scratch. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about threads. So in our last video, we looked at the basics of our parallel STL algorithms. And these were really nice because we didn't have to worry about the underlying details of parallelization. We could just use our you know, normal STL algorithms as we are familiar with them and just pass an execution policy like std execution par or std execution par unseek, right? To get some parallelism. Now, there are going to be times where, you know, the work that we're trying to do doesn't perfectly match up with some STL algorithm. So we might need to get our hands dirty and do this parallelism ourselves. And one of the ways that we can do this in C++ is through um, these threads. We can spawn threads of execution in order to get parallelism. So we're going to be looking at the basics of how we can spawn and join these threads today and just gener in general play around with them. So let's go ahead and get started and we'll open up a new example called threads.cpp. And inside of here, we'll go ahead and include a couple of things. We'll include IO streams so we can do some printing. And then if we look on the right hand side of the page, I've got the CPP reference page for std thread pulled up. And it says that this thread is defined in our header thread. So we'll go ahead and include that as well. So we'll include thread. And then of course, we'll need a main function here. So what exactly is this uh, std thread here? So if we go ahead and take a look at that reference page again, it says that this class thread represents a single thread of execution and that threads allow multiple functions to execute concurrently. So what we can do is we can spawn a thread, tell it to execute some function, and that will go on in parallel with our main thread. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that. So the first thing that we need is some work that we want our thread to do, some function. And this can come in the form of something like a function object or a lambda or it can just be a normal function that we have defined. So we'll go ahead and just do that. So let's create a function here that we want our thread to run. And maybe we'll just call this function something like print thread ID. So it'll print some ID that we assign to a thread through say some integer ID. And then inside of the, uh, the function body here, we'll just do something like um, print with std c out, printing from thread, and then we'll print out whatever that ID is followed by a new line character. So this is what we want our thread to run, right? It's going to be given this uh, function as its job. So let's go ahead and go back to our main function here and spawn a thread, right, to run this function. So here we'll go ahead and create some object of type std thread, and we can just call it t1, and to our constructor we'll pass a couple things. So number one, we'll pass say the work we want this thread to do. And in this case, it's going to be this function. But like I said, it could be something like a function object or Lambda. So here we'll just pass this function name. So print thread ID. And then we'll go ahead and pass the arguments to this, um, to this function. So in this case, we just have say a single parameter, this integer ID. So we'll just pass an integer here. So something like zero or one or two. Okay, so that's the basics on how we can create a thread. So this will spawn a thread that can go ahead and run and maybe it'll run on one of our different cores on our processor. Okay, now after we've launched a thread, one of the things we have to do with our std thread is we have to join it, right? So we have to set a place where we want our main thread to wait for T1 to finish. And we do that by calling T1.join. So this just tells, um, this just says, this is where my main thread is going to wait for T1 to finish execution here. So we'll need to do that for any of our std threads. All right, so we can go ahead and save this and let's go ahead and compile and run the simple example here. So we'll go ahead and minimize this and we can compile threads.cpp, color output executable, something like threads. And you can see we have our executable here. Now, uh, depending on what compiler you're using, um, you may get some sort of error related to pthreads when you compile like this, saying that it, do it doesn't know, you know, you know what this pthreads thing is. So depending on your compiler, you may also need to add this linker flag or this linker option to your compiler. So something like dash L pthread, and this will just link against the pthread library. But this very much depends on which operating system you're using and your specific compiler. Okay, so let's go ahead and run our executable here. So we'll just run this threads. And you can see we get this printing from thread zero. So we spawned a thread to print out the string and then we waited for it to complete. Great. So let's go ahead and open up our example and let's see how we can maybe make this a little bit cleaner 
using a more modern form of threads, and that's going to be with this std j thread. So one of the kind of um, annoying parts about working with this thread is we have to manually specify this join right here. So we have to make sure we set a point where we want our uh, main function to wait for this to complete here. Now, what happens if we don't include this? We don't include this join. So we have to remember what's going on. As soon as we launch this thread to print out this, you know, uh, printing from thread, you know, whatever the number is, our main function is still going to continue execution. So our main function, after it spawns the thread, it's going to return zero. Um, and, you know, this T1 object is going to add a scope. So before our thread might even begin, it might immediately be destroyed, right? And that might lead to some errors. So let's go ahead and, uh, and, and see what that looks like. So we'll recompile without this, um, this call to join. And we'll go ahead and run our example here. And you can see we actually get a, a, an error here, right? So we get this core dumped and this terminate called without an active exception. So the issue here is that, you know, we're spawning a thread here first, this T1. But before this thread is able to complete, right, it gets destroyed before it gets joined. And that leads to this error here. Now we have a nice way around that as part of C++20. And that's with this std j thread here. So if we go ahead and look at the CPP reference page, it, said that it says that this class j thread represents a single thread of execution. So very similar to our std thread. And it has the same general behavior as our std thread, except the j thread automatically rejoins on destruction. So in this case, when you know our main function does this return zero here, and t1 gets destroyed, so its destructor fires, if we use a j thread, it'll automatically call join on this thread rather than just destroying it like our thread does. So let's go ahead and see how we can replace that. And all we really need to do is change the type from std thread to std j thread. Then we no longer need to call join here. It'll automatically join when it goes out of scope, right, and gets destroyed. So we can go ahead and save this now that we're using the std j thread, and we can recompile. And since we're using a C++20 feature, we'll need to add that stud, uh, that dash dash std equals C++20. Otherwise, we might get an error here uh, because it's a very new feature. So we can just do dash dash std equals C++20. Okay, so it compiled without issues, and we can go ahead and run this. And you can see that we no longer get that um, that compiler error and we no longer get that runtime error related to you know not joining our thread because we're using a j thread that automatically joins when it gets destroyed okay so let's look at one final thing today around threads and that's with working with say groups of threads here so instead of just say spawning a single thread here let's spawn a whole bunch of threads say in a loop and we'll store these threads in something like a vector so here we can go ahead and create some vector of std j threads. So we'll get, create a std vector here of type std j thread. And we'll just call this something like, you know, my threads, right? Then in a loop here, so we'll just do a simple for loop. So int i is equal to zero, i is less than three. So we'll spawn three th threads and then i plus equals one each iteration. We'll just do this my threads dot in place back, right? So we're going to forward the um, the arguments to our constructor here for our J thread. So what we're going to pass to the constructor of our J thread, right, inside of our vector, will just be this print thread ID and then I in this case, right? So the ID of this thread, so it'll be zero, one, or two here. And then again, because we're using J threads here, we don't have to worry about you know, iterating over this vector again and calling join, right? These threads will automatically join when they go out of scope. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what happens when we run multiple threads at the same time that are all trying to print out this printing from thread. So we'll save this, we'll go ahead and minimize, we'll recompile our executable here, and let's go ahead and run threads. And what we see is that we get three different prints from three different threads and they can get printed in you know, some different order here, right? Because they're all just kind of sent off to do this work. We didn't specif specify an order in which we wanted them to do this work. They just worked kind of asynchronously, you know, doing their work when they got around to it. So in this case, we see printing from thread one, zero, and two. And if we run this multiple times, we might see different orderings. And in fact, we might see things that look kind of strange here. 
So we start seeing prints that get interleaved with each other, right? Along with say different orderings, right? We have multiple threads kind of going in parallel, but we're not really coordinating them in any way. So they might wind up printing, you know, kind of as we hope, right? Or maybe hope to expect, right? With each one say on a new line, or they might get somewhat interleaved here, which is something that we might not want. So we're going to be looking, we'll be looking at that, say, in the next video and talking about how we can coordinate actions across different threads. Okay, but that's going to go ahead and do it for today. That's the basics on how we can uh, work with these threads and these J threads and spawn them and join them. And like I said, we'll be working with um, coordination in some of these later videos. And I'll make sure to link below the video both these CPP reference pages for thread and J thread respectively. And as always, you can find you know, any of these examples at my GitHub page at github.com slash coffee before arch. But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.